Hello guys and welcome back to another feeding video. Today as well as some other creatures I'm going to start off with my ghost mantis communal enclosure. Feed these guys, see how they're getting on. Uh, the first thing I wanted to address is the enclosure itself because I did make a video when I made this and I really like the interior, it looks really cool but unfortunately because it's acrylic and I know I've mentioned this before, it's now started to warp. Um, I'd hoped that because it was a bit thicker acrylic, like 3mm, it might not do that but it's still warping so I've had to kind of patch it up as you can see just to cover off any gaps that are appearing so make sure we don't get any escapees. Um, it's a bit disappointing but it's a lesson learned, I'm just always going to go with glass from now on because it just doesn't work long term so I'm currently in the process of putting something together to move these guys into because at the moment this just won't do anymore. Now usually when I feed mantids, unless it's for a video or something, I'm not going to be doing it with the tweezers one by one, I'll normally just chuck a fly in. With these guys though I do always hand feed them because I want to make sure that they're all getting their fair share of food. Um, as I mentioned in another video, there was one of these guys that for whatever reason, I don't know if it was through food or genetics, but he outpaced all of these in growth. And he's a lot bigger, so I had to move him out because I was worried that he would eat the smaller guys in the enclosure. Um, so going forwards, I've kind of been feeding him a little bit less than these guys. I've, I'm tong feeding to make sure they're getting the adequate nutrients and getting their share of food to make sure they grow to be nice and healthy. Interestingly as well, they seem to have kind of adopted their own territories in here. Like the girl here, I notice a lot, she's always in this kind of area. Whether that is um, something they adopt and establish <clears throat> when they're in communal setups like this, I'm not too sure. Um, the polymorphism in the colour is really evident as well. I mean, look at the difference between the green one here and the really dark one at the top. Um, it's quite a striking difference. Yeah, if you can see her, and then compared to this guy, and then we've also got a more tanned variant down here, if you can see him. Oh, he didn't want to eat. Just jumped out of the way. What about you, mister? You've just molted. Well, three out of four isn't bad. That girl took one, that guy took one. One at the back, he took one. The only guy he didn't was this little chap who jumped steer clear of the fly since it went near him. But he's looking pretty plump, so no worries there. He might just be, he's just not hungry. Prefers a McDonald's, don't blame him. Again, similar story with this enclosure, because it's acrylic, it's just not fared that well over time. And this is my giant Asian mantis, who is fully grown. Uh, she's had her wings for maybe two months now, quite a while. Uh, I think she's gravid because she is looking fairly plump, um, even though she's not eating that much. I'm tempted to try her on a dubia. Depends how big these guys are. I think she could take one of these down. Or another one of these, I should say. She's had them before. This one here looks freshly molted. Let's see if she likes it. Okay, well, that answers that question. Whoa. That poor, poor roach. It's like as soon as she realised that it was actual food, she was just, she just could not wait to get that in her jaws. Oh, it's painful to watch, poor thing. Oh, worst day ever. I mean, these things are pretty hard bodied, so for it to be contorted like that in her raptoral arms, it shows the strength they've actually got. I'm sorry Mr. Roach, but I think your days are well and truly over. I mean, that is not a way to go, is it? Of all the ways that you could die, eaten alive whilst clasped in the hands of a mantis. It's not optimal. Next up, Mr. Snips. 
Let's see if we can tempt him out because at the moment he's crammed himself up in that corner. And I did try and get him out, but he looked very angry. I don't fancy messing with him, but let's see what we can do with a catch cup at the ready. Can you come down, please? You're all right, I know you're intimidating. Now let's get a debut in there before he makes a run for it. Come on, Mr. Snips. Do him. All right, we'll leave the doobie in there. Give him some water and I'll leave him to it. I guess he will find the prey, prey items if he so desires. And now onto somebody who I know is a lot more reliable and that's Brynhilda, my Tortocatl albipolosus curly-haired tarantula. She recently molted, um, she tucked herself away for about a month, burrowed all down the back of the enclosure, so I hadn't really seen her much, but then she came out looking very pristine, and she must be very hungry because her abdomen looks quite small and she's been prowling around a lot during the daytime. Um, I've nicked her water bowl actually to use in Mr. Snip's enclosure, so she does need a new one of those which I've bought. Um, I'm sure she will come out to greet us as soon as she starts feeling vibrations around the enclosure. She's also top of my list for rehousing out of this Perspex enclosure because I definitely do not want her escaping. I don't mind if a mantis gets out, but I really wouldn't fancy her prowling around my house. I'd like to get a slow-mo of her, but first of all, let's just try and tempt her out first. Whoa, okay. <laughs> Let's not get too feisty. Easy girl. Very formidable. And that's it for the feeding videos guys, if you enjoy watching the habits of my weird and wonderful creatures consider maybe giving me a sub. Until next time though, be kind to insects, take it easy and thanks for watching.